Front End Authority is an online community that promotes the ongoing education of front end technologies. I'm going to talk about game development. Game development at a front end talk. I asked AJ if I could talk, and he said yes. So, yay, AJ! Thank you! <laughs> I've been working on a game with my buddy for quite a while. We've worked on a couple games, which I'll cover. Um, but we've been working on this game called Yarn, and I'm going to kind of give you a quick flyby on all the pieces that it took to put together and make to what it is today. So a little bit about me. My name's Eric Bai. You can follow me on the Twitters, at MadClouds. I'm an iOS developer at PCO. This place pretty freaking awesome. Pretty awesome. Anyway, uh, I'm a husband and a father. That comes into play a little bit. I started this business, this LLC called Ellie's Games, about five years ago, and I published 20 games with it all designed for my daughter. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's, it's doing well. It's not enough to do a full-time gig, but it's, it's providing quite good supplemental income and has provided a lot of opportunity for me. Uh, one mention is that I did register an LLC because I thought that's what you did for businesses. Don't do that. If you're just by yourself, get like a sole proprietorship. It's like $800 cheaper and practically the same stuff. So that's my thing on that. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go, there you go. That guy knows what I'm talking about, yeah. Um, so all games have very similar things called the game loop. You know, frames per second is kind of the idea of the game loop. Things happen um, in this loop, and you kind of stuff stuff in there, and it makes the game look pretty. So I had, I had written my own game loop in, uni uh, I'm sorry, in iOS, just native. And it was basically like a JavaScript set timeout kind of thing that would just loop over itself. Um, I started using Cocos 2D as like a step up from just my own stuff, UI kit. I, I started using Cocos 2D, which is very similar to Sprite Kit. If you heard of Apple talk about Sprite Kit, it's practically the same thing. This is where they got a lot of their inspiration from. Um, so that Cocos 2D is great, it's an awesome framework, but it's all very code driven. There's no like interface or anything, and so I didn't like it. Um, so uh, today I'm going to talk about Unity, which I've started using for the last year, and it's been great. It's been awesome. I want to talk about my buddy William DeSantos. So we met it at a uh, tech meetup very similar to this, and we're like, hey, what's up? And he's like, what's up? And then we're like, I like games. He's like, me too. And so we started working, on, <laughs> we started working together on games, and he's an incredibly talented illustrator. Like, I've been looking for an illustrator to collaborate with for years, since Ellie's game started, and I have not found anybody to near caliber as William Dos Santos. So, that guy, he's awesome. Uh, yeah, 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 a little, little clap. Um, so, we worked together for a while on a game called Vet Island. My daughter, one day, you know, as I get my inspiration for games, I asked, you know, what do you want for a game? And she said, Dad, I want to be able to, like, heal animals. That's what I want to do. I want to heal animals. And so, we came up with this idea for Vet Island, and we worked on it for quite a while. Uh, I have a movie here that I'm going to show you, I think. Yeah. So you get an idea what it's like. No, no sound, though. Why no sound? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. <laughs> And so Will, Will did this intro video for us, for Vet Island, um, which has come, come a long way. We're, we're very happy with kind of the gameplay and the structure and everything that's come from it. And this was kind of the intro into Unity. We knew we wanted to make a game, but we didn't know anything about making a game of this caliber. Um, so you go in and you heal these animals, you give them what they need, and they give you coins, because that's how real life works, yeah. Uh, um, when, when we first started, we were like, all right, so how, what do we want to do? Well, we want an island, and we want these animals that you heal, and there's this like um, ambulance that drives around, and so I found this video that I had put together for, for Will a very long time ago that I wanted to show you. Like, this was prototype alpha 0, 0 0.1, <laughs> you know, and it was just this ambulance driving around the island, but from that, we got you know a lot of ideas on how we wanted the game mechanics to work and everything. I thought this was funny. I wanted to show you. Yeah. 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 Clap for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we together we worked on it for every weekend for eight months, and it and we shipped it and it's been awesome. We built it in Unity. It's cross-platform, so we were able to release it on Android and iOS. 
Um, it's, it has 25 animals and eight different habitats and two islands and all kinds of coins. Um, I was going to show you the YouTube thing. Yeah. And, it, and it has 17,000 downloads so far. So that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Pretty happy about that. Um, there's some things we still want to add to it, uh, but that was kind of our first thing to do together. So one thing that suffered with Vet Island with over that eight months was scope creep. We had an idea where we wanted to make this game where you could like heal animals. That's what the premise of the game was. And then we just continued to heal more and more animals until eight months later, and then we were like, all right, it's time to put it out the door. So that, that was troublesome. Um, but together through that, we were like, hey, this is fun. Let's keep doing it. Let's do this thing. We'll call it you games, Eric and Will games, Eric Will games. So we, we made that. And then after Vet Island, we decided, okay, let's make another game. We're kind of burnt out on this eight-month development cycle. Let's make something really fast. So we made a game called Jogger. And it's 24-7, no, 247 downloads. So <laughs> it's not the most successful, but it was a fun little 30-day uh, project we did on ourselves. And that brings us to Yarn, where we are currently at. Um, after Jogger, we'll, we were talking about, okay, what do we want to do next? And he's like, man, I've been thinking about this game for years, for five years now. Has this, has this hero, his name's Doodle, and he's a yarn ball. And then there's these like zombie cats, okay? That's, that's the thing. And then somewhere in there, there's this pow. And that, that, that's the whole premise. That's everything he gave us. So we were like, all right, okay. Uh, let's, let's start somewhere. Let's start with a physics-based puzzler. Um, we were kind of thinking like Angry Bird style or some sort of, we had, there was a game, Drop the Chicken, I think, was part of our inspiration for a while. And you would like move, move objects and then cut a rope and see what happened. So we worked on that for three months. And, and it got to a pretty sweet spot. We were, we were pretty happy with it. Um, I'll show you a movie on it. I got a movie. OK, this was Yarn Demo. Still no sound, so I'll, I'll make the sound effects, because that's what you do when there's no sound. <laughs> it loads for a while. It was a bad performance back then. Um, yeah. Oh, there we go. So you're this yarn ball, and cut the yarn ball, and pow! You, you, you crushed the cat or something. You killed the cat somehow. So then you moved around these objects, tried to collect the stars. And so the game, you know, was, was pretty sweet. We were happy with what we had made in three months. It was quite a polished product. We could have shipped that. Um, but we didn't. We didn't. So there was a problem. There was a problem with it. It was no fun. It just wasn't fun. Like, you spent the time moving the objects and cut the rope, and then poof, that was it. <laughs> so, so it just wasn't catchy enough for us. So we went back to the drawing board. We made some serious game changes. We went from portrait to landscape, and we went from a physics-based puzzler to a platformer. Those are pretty big changes. Um, and so from that three-month mark, we worked on it again for three more months, and this is where we ended up. This is yarn as it looks today. This, this is me playing it, and I built it, no problem. Get out of here. It's not. Wow! Yeah! Okay. Yeah! <laughs> so this, this is yarn as it exists today, and it's way more animated and you know, interactive and live action and feels good playing it. It's actually a, a, a fun game. So I'm going to kind of show you the meat and potatoes of what goes into that to make yarn a real thing. So this is Unity in its amazingness. Um, in the top, we have our scene layout and then our game layout. It doesn't mean anything to you. Hierarchy and some project um, layouts. So this kind of just organizes everything for us. We'll pay attention to this section here, which is the scenes. And so in Unity, um, everything's a scene. Like if you think of sections, like the title screen is a scene, and the level select, that's a scene, and the level itself, that's a scene. Oh, there we go. I was trying to find zoom. And so these are all seams. I have a game complete, a level select, loading screen, those things. Uh, if, if we, so that's kind of like the first piece. This, the second piece of Unity is these things called game objects. Now everything's a game object. The camera's a game object. Your here is a game object. The buildings are game objects. Everything's a game object. If, if I right click, it might be hard to see, and, and if I hit create empty, that's creating an empty game object 
which just has a position, a rotation, and a scale. And so there's, uh, if, if we look at this, this little dot over here is the game object itself, but it doesn't have anything in it. What adds to a game object is components, and so I can add any component I want to this. I could add a camera, and so I turn this game object into a camera, or I can add an, an image or something along those lines to change it to whatever we want. So now you know pretty much everything in Unity. Good job. Now, uh, we'll talk about physics. Phys Unity is built with physics, and, and one of the main reasons we use Unity and don't build it natively is because it has a cross-platform support. We build it all within Unity's boundaries, and it will then output to iOS or Android or Windows or Linux or Mac or Windows desktop, all those for us, so that's awesome. One of the things that it has is a physics engine, and so it can tell you, oh, this object contacted that object, or there's friction on this object, and so it, it slides slowly. And so in, in this example scene here, I have our hero, Doodle, and he ha he's an empty game object, and he has some things inside him. He has his eyes that I can turn on and off. And he also has a rigid body, which is like what has mass in Unity. And so he has some properties set over here. He has a couple scripts up applied to him that um, allow me to hook into functions like, oh, when you tap the screen or you hit the space bar, those are just normal scripts that can be written in JavaScript or C Sharp or Boo. I don't know what Boo is, but you can write in, in if you want. Um, so if we, if we play this right now, uh, because it's a rigid body, he'll just fall, he'll fall down whoop, right off the screen. So that's, that's pretty sweet. That's pretty sweet. If we add a box underneath him, and this box is just an empty game object, has a mesh renderer and um, a sprite attached to it, just so it, that it can render an object. But other than that, it has a box collider, which is what interacts um, with the rigid body of Doodle. And so now, if we hit play, he doesn't go down to the bottom. And the scripts, that, the component scripts that I've added to our hero, when I touch the screen, start propelling him in a direction. So, so far, so good. Problem is he runs off the screen. And so if we add, oops, if we add more things here, now we won't fall off the screen. And I have a script that's listening for tap, and, or touch, or spacebar, because for desktop. But if you touch the screen, he'll start moving. We wanted the interaction to be very simple. We didn't want controls on the screen, cluttering up the screen. We didn't want you know, swipe gestures or anything. Yeah, go ahead. I can, no, oh, it's a great question. If I tap, he jumps, and so, <laughs> awesome. So that's the, that's the idea. He will continue in the same direction as he starts uh, until he hits a wall, and if he's touching the wall and off the ground, he will switch directions. So, uh, so no, that's pre, I, I can, because I wrote the game. You know, there's a property in here that I can change to give him more force or less force, that kind of thing. But yeah, it's all based on parameters. I think if, if we look in here, uh, somewhere in this jump and move, I have like a jump force. So literally, I could like change this to way higher. And now, if I z the material. Oh gosh, he jumped right off the screen. <laughs> there he is. There he is again. <laughs> all right. Uh, so yeah, you need to make it really easy to like plug all these things together. One of the one of the challenges we had was like, okay, how do you determine if he's touching the wall or touching the ground or you know, make sure he doesn't jump in midair for whatever reason. And so uh, we devised this strategy of these um, physics colliders. They're colliders, same thing that prevents people from going in between each other. And it might be hard to see, but there's two blue circles kind of right outside his eyes and one overlaps to the left side of his body and one overlaps to the right side. And so there's the right edge collider and the left edge collider. So if that tells me if he's touching the wall. And there's also one on the bottom here that's red. Um, and that tells me if he's touching the ground. So I can do tests on those colliders, check if he's touching any of them. And if he is, then do a jump. So that's cool, that's movement. Um, input, Unity you know, makes it very easy to get the input, I can say, you know, get the letter K. Anytime the person pushes the letter K, do something. Or if they hit the space bar, or if they're using an Xbox controller and they hit the A button, you know, all these things are mapped in Unity. It makes it super easy to plug into. Um, I did, they also have mobile touch uh, interfaces, um, but I started using a, a plugin. So Unity has an asset store, which is pretty awesome. It's, you know, it's user generated content for Unity. 
And so, I don't know, a dynamic bone thing is what we're looking at right now, but uh, there's one I got called uh, Easy Touch, and that, and that maps all the gestures. So I can listen for touch down or touch up or pinch or swipe or all those. And so that's, we use that in Vet Island too that helped with a lot of the panning and zooming and all the crazy stuff we did in there. Um, so input, that's pretty important. Um, next we'll talk about assets. So especially when you're targeting mobile, it's difficult because there's so many resolutions, there's so many, you know, DPI and um, enabled, uh, the ability to support that isn't really built natively into Unity. I mean, it is, but it's not very simple. And so we started using an asset um, called 2D Toolkit, and that, and that does a lot of the sprite management for us. And so if we, if we look over here, we'll see Doodle. This, this is the sprite that makes up Doodle's body, and we can change it. There's, uh, I don't know how much I want to go into this. What's, what's interesting is there's a whole bunch of sprite collections, okay? And in a sprite collection is all these, all these graphics that make up everything in the game. And we, we just click and drag and put them in this sprite collection, and then we say, okay, commit. And it, uh, what 2D Toolkit does is it slices them all up, and it puts them into one PNG file as like compressed as possible. And so here, here's hopefully another one find. Let me find one where it's sliced up. You can get a better example of it. And so here we'll see, this is the exterior of the building I was using a little bit earlier, but you'll see all these red squares, and it literally cuts those up into little pieces. And so if we go into here, let me just show you this real quick. Use PNG. Now we'll see like this, this is the atlas that's made up when I hit commit. And then with 2D Toolkit and Unity, it knows like, okay, this square down here goes here, this square goes here, and it makes it incredibly more efficient because if you're loading a whole bunch of sprites into mobile, it, there's like all this unused space around them and it's like loading multiple resources at the same time is not very good. And so the recommendation is to put it into a sprite sheet and that's what this does. It puts everything into a sprite sheet and then frames it for us magically. So that, that was a big deal. It took us a while to figure that out. And even still, we have to do all our assets at, at 1x and at 2x, those familiar with mobile development, and at 4x or 3x, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, that's, that's 2D cool Toolkit. That's been a big help for us, um, but also quite a stumbling block for quite a while to figure out how to make it look right on all the devices. So if I load up our level real quick. Okay, so this is, this is level one in iPad wide. If you're, if you're using an iPad in, in landscape, this is what it would look like. But if we're on an iPhone 5, it's gonna look a lot different because it's, it's squished and it's longer. And so compensating and, and adjusting for that extra space was a challenge with this game because the screen space changes, but we want the puzzles all to be the same. We don't want them to scale up or scale down or anything. So we devised this grid-based system to manage all the levels in, and I'll go into it a little bit more later, um, but we, we made this system for outlining each level. If we look up here, you'll see these big dots, like these guys. Those are just empty game objects that I've mapped and say, hey, give me all these specific type of empty game objects and make that the outline of my level. And so if I go in here, I do that. Now when I move this guy around, you'll actually see the level change. Um, and so that, that, was, that was one of the like, breakthrough moments for us, figuring out how to do that. And it like, automatically generates a mesh like, around these dots, and then it creates a mask on that mesh that cuts out a hole in this um, building exterior image, which lets us see the stuff behind it. And it adds an edge collider so that our hero doesn't go through it. So some interesting stuff happening, happening there. And not only that, there's we have 30 levels. We decided we were going to ship with 100. That was kind of our goal. We didn't make that. We, we, well, the timeline was like the scope was growing. And so we cut it back, cut it back, and then eventually landed on 30 levels, very well-designed levels. They're awesome. Um, but designing them all, putting everything in place, making sure they're, they're progressively harder, making sure you can collect all the stars, that, that was a big hurdle for us to get through. It took a lot of time to invest into that. 
So I literally were dragging around these game objects to make up each level, and then I wrote a handy script. Um, it's called Yarn Editor, and that's one of the best things about Unity is that it's customizable. You can plug in your own uh, scripts into the editor itself, which will help you do everything. And so I made this little editor that loops through the levels that we've made, and if I wanted to make a new level, this is how I would do it. I would just put in a level number and then drag things around, and then I'd hit export. And what export does is just packages, it like look, it loops through everything and says, okay, there's a game object I'm interested in, there's a game object, there's a game object, and it spits it out to XML. And so if we look at this file here, levels, levels.xml, should be opening, there we go. Um, this, this is what makes up each level in Yarn. It's just XML, all the items. We have stars, we have a cat and doodle. And then we have points, which is actually the, out, the border of the, the level. And then we have background objects that are just like the lamps or um, ancillary things that make it look pretty. Yeah, so when I hit export, it will write to this file here. And then when the actual game loads, it will look at this XML and say, hey, give me level one. Oh, there's a point here, there's a star there, there's this there. And so it l does it all at runtime. And so this, this was another big breakthrough, like figuring out how to read and write from the file system. Beautifully handled by Unity, because I don't have to worry about, is this Android or is this iOS? I just say, hey, Unity, write this file, XML file, or read this XML file, and it, and it does it. It does it. It's great. It's great. Um, so that's persistence. Uh, another big breakthrough with persistence that took us a while to get to was I started using this framework called Sumla. It's an open source framework. I love you guys if you're watching, but uh, it's very complicated and broke constantly. And so Vet Island suffered from several um, bugs where in-app purchases would just fail. It would take the money and then wouldn't give you any items. So <laughs> that's bad. Uh, I mean, it, ha it happened so frequently that I had to put an update out that let me like give away coins to people. So when they contacted me and said, hey, my in-app purchase didn't work, I said, oh, I'm sorry about that. Here's 5,000 coins, <laughs> you know. Please don't report me to the... Pete Authority. So anyway, a headache, banging my head for those eight months with Vet Island, and then looked into some other options and found out, hey, if I can write XML, why can't I just write another file that keeps state and read from that? And so that's what we did. Um, similar to this XML file, uh, Unity writes to binary, and so we can serialize levels themselves and um, just keep track of them. So we can tell, like, oh, on level 8, you didn't get any stars, but on level 9, you got 3, and level 10. Uh, so this is what Yarn looks like. It looks very pretty. Will did a wonderful job <laughs> on, the, on the graphics. But here you can see we're, we're up to level 26, and 27 is unlocked, and all that data is saved just in a binary file. It's like XML, but um, serialized. So that, that was huge. No more Sumla. Yay. Yay. Uh, OK, so we talked about like how to build the level, kind of our hero and the physics behind him, kind of the rules put in place um, with friction and, and that. Another big thing that Unity does is it provides a UI system. So like the HUD or the title screen, if we go to that. Uh, uh, Uni did a great job with the UI stuff. So here's, here's the title screen, and, and we can see if I change sizes again, like things, things are pinned to either the corners or the middle or the side or scaled. And so based on the different um, screen sizes, well, you're never going to have it in portrait, so that's a bad example. But objects will perfectly be pinned to the right spot. So this is another thing like, OK, Android has 10,000 different resolutions. How do you plan for it? Well, you put things where they're supposed to be and, and let Unity UI do the rest for you. So that's pretty sweet. Unity UI is good. Talked about persistence and the level XML. And so this, this is where we've landed after six months of development, rewriting it. Um, going from portrait to landscape was a lot harder than we thought. You can't just like rotate the assets or scale them. That doesn't work. So we had to redesign a lot of this. Uh, and uh, this, is, this is where we landed. It's got 30 levels. I'll go to level 25. I'm pretty good at this game, so I probably can beat this one. Whew, that was close. 
Uh, yeah, it's fun. We're a uh, good thing with Unity. They have services, and one of the services is like this cloud building service where it can listen to a Git repo, and anytime I push to that Git repo, it scoops it all up and then spits out all of the builds for it. So have that set up, and that's nice. So we're, we're literally building for Linux and Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. Uh, we're currently in review for iOS, so that's pretty exciting. Any day now, I was hoping like today would be the big reveal, like, oh, and now go download it, but you can't, so don't. But do when it die, open <laughs> when it gets reviewed. Uh, let's see. That's pretty much all of like Unity I wanted to show you. Uh, it's it's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet. What else I got in here? So that's yarn. That's yarn. Yep. Will has made some awesome marketing graphics that I'm like so proud of. Really thankful. Like I am so bad at graphics and he is so good. And that's why we're so compatible. You know, our personalities mesh well, you know, uh, it's nice to rely on another person and deliver constantly. So these are some cool graphics where when it does go live, we're planning on this right on the political coattails a little bit. And with you see Trump and Bernie down there. And I think we're working on a Hillary too. Yeah. Vote, vote for doodle. And we're going to, we're going to just try and, you know, ride on social media with that stuff. And here's some awesome, beautiful graphics, you know. The, it's been interesting ride so far because Vet Island was kind of my vision and my focus, you know, my, my direction. And Yarn has been pretty much mostly Wills. And so we've been working well together and really excited with where it's going. Uh, you can check out eugames.us, and that's where our games are. And you'll find Yarn there, too, which is coming soon. But th this is a front-end authority web meetup. This is front-end web right here, which Will made. It's beautiful. I mean, it looks great. I'm sure I'll tell you how we did it soon, if you want to know. Yeah. So that's it. That's everything I want to talk about Unity. You can find me on Twitter, at MadCloud. So mono behavior is like the root class for Unity. Kind of what, what a game object is, it's a mono behavior. Uh, we're using analytics, and so these are the libraries that are included. Um, this is a publicly declared variable for the music. So the title screen has music. And by declaring it public there, when we go into the title, this is that game object that has the script uh, appended to it. So you see here, title script. That's the file we were just looking at. Well, it has this title music attribute just right there. And so I can click and drag from this project library, drag the file I want to use there, and now it's available in the code. Um, so Unity has some special methods like start or awake or on destroy or those things you can hook into, and start's one of them. And so I have a, a singleton game controller that kind of just lives when the game gets started up, and it has a function on it that plays title music. Um, the play function is public and it's just available. And so what I can do with that is this, this is a button object, game object, has a button that Unity provides. And inside that I can say, hey, there's this title, there's this title script I want you to use. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. And then inside that title script, there's a play function. So that's what we were just looking at there. And so now I've hooked up that button. Anytime you push it, it's gonna play this function here which um, calls our singleton and says, hey, load this scene, the level select scene. Uh, there's going to be a shop. There's a review. So if you hit the little star down there, we'll go to a review website where you can review it. There's a contact. There was a Twitter. There's not there anymore. And some helper stuff. So that's kind of what the, the script looks like. Uh, I can show you some other stuff. This is the jump. Like This is the movement script for Doodle himself. There's some, like that speed and jump force we looked at and some booleans that let me know if he's touching any of the walls. Um, some vector threes that are set up to uh, cast those circles off to the sides. So I say, hey, I want this circle to show up a little bit over to the left or a little bit over to the right. And I'm not using that animator. So it's sad. There's that start function again that Unity gives us to hook into. And so on the start of this function, I say, hey, first tap boolean is true because I want to know when it's the first tap. Um, 
do some other stuff here. And then on enable is another Unity function. And I say, hey, when this game object is enabled, I want to use the easy touch asset I had talked about before and say, hey, on touch start, call this handle touch start method, which is down here. And so if it is the first tap, uh, do this. Turn from first tap to false, and then set doodle speed so he starts moving. So as soon as you tap, if it's the first tap, it starts moving, and that's all it will do. And then it won't be the first tap anymore, so this gets skipped. Oh, don't do that. And then here, this, and then any time in the future you touch, we say, oh, are you hitting the left wall? And, or are you not grounded? If that's true, change directions. If he is grounded and he is touching the wall, either wall, then we jump, then we jump. And then this is the function for jump. I, I don't know how much more you want me to go <laughs> into. This is what it looks like. Very yeah. cool. Uh, so it looks like there's a lot of kind of point and click stuff too. And then traditional sure, yeah. code is what were the, was there any kind of learning curves to getting into Unity? Lots of learning <laughs> curves. Yeah, a lot of lot of challenges. I mean, like that Sumla one was a big one that haunted me and still haunts me to this day. But uh, the, the program language C Sharp, which is pretty friendly, uh, I haven't had any problem with it. Uh, it's very object oriented and goes together. There's lots of Unity lessons and tutorials. Um, something I'm getting into now is I'd like to make a multiplayer game. And so the networking aspect of it, that's a whole other challenge that I'm not ready for yet. Um, but the, uh, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, once you get the scenes or the game objects and the components, it's component driven development. And so everything can be a component, and you can have like a you know explosion component, and you can say, okay, the enemy gets this explosion component if he gets touched, he explodes, or Doodle gets this explosion, or this box gets this explosion component, and so you make these components, and you have a library of all these components, and you just say, you get these components, and you get these components, so it's it's pretty easy, pretty easy to do, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Or you can make a full game. Yeah. Stuff. That's right. If you're willing to pay for it, you can get enough assets to make pretty much any game. It's like so ridiculous. The, well, the, good ones you pay for. the good ones you pay for. Yeah. What, what about Unity? Unity is free. Unity is free. Um, there's a couple of gotchas. There's a uh, there's a loading screen that they force on the free version, so it says like made with Unity. Um, if you pay. $1,500, then you get the pro version, and you can remove that little thing. But other than that, it's literally the same, <laughs> the same application. No, I, I'm not even kidding. There's one other preference that's pretty awesome that a lot of people like in the colors. Oh, man. I don't, I don't, it used to have this checkbox, like, dark mode, and you could check it, and it, like, it has, makes this nice dark UI and everything. But that is only available <laughs> in the paid version. It's ridiculous. It's all cosmetic, and yeah, it works. But so there's a lot of other game development en engines too. Um, CryEngine, Amazon just released Yum Lumberyard, which is built off CryEngine. There's uh, Unreal, whatever Unreal's engine is. So there's a whole bunch very similar to Unity that have all developed this free business model where you can use the software for free. And then if you make you know up to a thousand, a hundred thousand dollars, it's free. If you make over a hundred thousand, then they take some profit share or some other ways to. To, but once I make 100,000, I'll be happy to share my profits with them, <laughs> right? So this has been, it's been fun to learn, and it's all of my free time, you know? Just enjoy making games. So, uh, question. Sure. So, software you're gonna ship right. is going to have... Testing, yeah. yeah. So the software you're going to ship is going to have that uh, Unity loading screen? Correct. At the beginning? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. For, I think, any application. So if we go, I've built it on, I think I have a Mac client that I can show you. Beyond builds. And while you're doing that, yeah. how long did it take you to do Jogger? Uh, so it was kind of a 30-day challenge for ourselves. Like, what can we make in 30 days? And so that's what it took, 30 days. Uh, it's on the App Store. You can be the 200, 248th person to play it. And so this is the loading screen on the Mac app. When I export it to Mac, that's what it looks like. But he, I mean, here's the game. I think I picked the wrong resolution, which may, oh, it looks pretty good there. It looks pretty good there. But the same thing we were just playing in Unity is now ported specifically. I can upload this to the Mac App Store, and um, it works. It works. <laughs> yep. 
so on the next release, we want, we want Doodle to be a lot more animated, a lot squishier. So now in this next version, we're working on that. So, yeah. This, this is available. If you go to eogames.us, we'll put a link up to get the Mac app or the Windows app or eventually the Android and iOS app. What if the zombie cats could move? Just oh, throwing man. that out there. Oh, man. We all better start running, dude. <laughs> Level 30. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. I want to write that down. I write that down. Yeah, yeah. All right. It's, it's in there. I don't know. <laughs> no, maybe. I don't know. It doesn't phase me. I played it, literally played it so many times where none of them are hired anymore. Oh, that's an interesting idea. We have talked about multiplayer and yarn, where it's a uh, race to see who can get to the cap first and other things like that. But for now, we'll just keep it single player and get it to the app store. I'm pretty happy with that. Good, good. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyone else? Oh, there are an Easter egg. There is an Easter egg. Do you want me to show it to you? Yeah. All right. Uh, there is. Well, I'll show you, and you'll be like, oh, yeah, that is an Easter egg. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right, Eric. That's an Easter egg. Uh, I think it's an Easter egg. Uh, <laughs> That's Vet Island, which is the other app that we made together. There's a little picture frame in the yep, inside yarn. That counts, right? That counts. Yeah, totes. Totes. Thank you, thank you. Thanks. Oh, we have stickers for everybody. So we've got doodle stickers made, and everybody can have one. You're welcome. As long as you download and rate the app when it comes out, you promise. Like, by taking a sticker, you agree to it. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.